What if you could simply draw your edits directly onto your photos? Dodge and burn, exposure blending and retouching would perhaps become a whole lot more enjoyable than with your plain old mouse. So in this video, we'll take a look at this Huion pen display, use it to edit some photos and see if this is something every photographer actually needs. Now, I personally haven't had that much experience using pen displays or graphic tablets. I've used a Wacom tablet here and there, but it never really clicked. The Huion Canvas Pro, however, is not your standard graphics tablet. In fact, it's not a graphics tablet at all. It's a pen display or a display tablet. So it's actually a monitor on which you can draw using a wireless pen. Similar to an iPad, but with one big difference. It's not a standalone device like an iPad. In order to function, pen displays need to be connected to a computer. So they're not a tablet computer like, for example, the iPad. And because it's a monitor, the main advantage of display tablets is that it can run any program that your computer can run. So Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, or whatever software you are using. These graphic tablets are quite well known and popular among digital artists and graphic artists. So people that draw a lot, but I thought it would also be a great tool to edit photos. So when Huion reached out asking if I want to try and edit some photos on their Canvas Pro 13 2.5K, I said, sure, let's give it a try. All right, let's quickly look at the specs of this Huion pen display, and then I'll show you some photo editing examples. The Canvas Pro 13 2.5K is Huion's improved version of the previous Canvas Pro 13. They upgraded the 1080p resolution to a 2.5K resolution, and it looks really good on this 13-inch IPS screen. The screen is laminated with a low glare surface. The anti-glare surface helps with reducing glare or reflections from the screen, but at the expense of some image sharpness, which you would get with glossy screens. However, this is the case with any display tablet with a matte screen. Lamination enables the pen tip to touch precisely where you want it to on the screen, without any visual gap between the screen and the display underneath. This is something often referred to as parallax. The Huion has 145% sRGB with a 1200 to 1 contrast ratio. So the screen is nice and bright and it has beautiful vibrant colors. On the left of the screen there are seven fully customizable shortcut buttons. They have a slight indent which makes it easier to navigate and remember the right button while keeping your focus on the screen. It's really easy to set these up in the software. The Canvas Pro 13 2.5K comes with Huion's Pentec 3.0 pen, which which is supposedly their latest and greatest pen. It doesn't require a battery or charging, and again here you will find two programmable buttons, which you can also set up in the Huion software. The pen holder includes extra standard nips and felt nips if you ever need to change them. Both the pen and the pen holder are lightweight and made out of plastic, so it makes them feel a little bit less high quality. But they do the job perfectly fine, so I guess it's not really something to complain about. And you might have noticed this funny looking glove. This is not a fashion statement, but a drawing glove that Huion supplies with the display. Using the glove on the display tablet really does improve the drawing comfort quite a bit. When wearing the glove, your hand just slides much smoother across the screen. Another great accessory included in the Canvas Pro 13 package is this stand. It allows you to place the tablet at an angle of anywhere between 20 to 60 degrees, which makes using the display much more comfortable as opposed to it laying flat on your desk. It's really easy to set up the Huion pen display. You simply download and install the driver or software from Huion's website and then connect the display to your computer. There are three possible ways to connect it. One is by using this three in two cable, which I personally find a bit too much of a cable mess. And the other one is by using a USB-C to USB-C for the video connection, and then another one for the power supply. But if your computer supports it, you can also use only one USB-C to USB-C cable, and that will do both the video transfer and the power supply. And I think the one cable connection is absolutely great, so I was really happy that it worked with my MacBook M1 Pro. All right, let's open up Photoshop and start using the display. I downloaded these nice brushes. Let me just take this one here, and you can tell as I'm drawing how smooth that is. And also notice that as I'm pushing the pen harder, the opacity becomes higher. If I'm pushing soft, you can tell the opacity is much lower. So it's very precise and really feels as if you're actually drawing on the screen. And I think this will probably be the biggest advantage of using a tablet like this when you're editing photos. You just have a lot more finer control over your movements in comparison to using a mouse. A cool little use case when you're editing photos would be when you, for example, want to change the color of something. So in this photo here, let's say I want to change the color of this orange beetle. I will just create a new layer, change the blending mode to hue. 
And then I'm going to select a green color, for example. Make sure I have my brush selected. And I'm going to take a soft round brush, maybe not that soft. And then let's change the size a bit. And then I can just start painting in the beetle. Now, of course, if you're doing this for real, you would be a lot more precise. But for the sake of this example, I'm just going to do it quick and dirty. And there you go. Now we have a green beetle. I also think this would work really well when you're doing exposure blending in Photoshop. So right here I have three shots from a recent trip to northern Spain opened up as layers in Photoshop. And this first layer here is the exposure for the sky. So you can tell that the rest of the image is a little bit underexposed. And the second layer here is for the midground and the foreground is a little bit out of focus. So that's why I have a third layer with the foreground in focus. And now when using a mask, I can simply draw in what I want to have visible from each layer. So I have a black brush selected here and I'm just going to paint where I want to have the second layer visible. And painting in with the pen like this is just so much more exact because I can use the pressure to decide how much I want to have visible from that second layer. So here on the front and in the middle, I want to have pretty much everything visible. So I'm pushing quite hard. But then on the edge here, I'm just going to push a little bit softer. And that just makes things way more exact and just it feels very natural to paint things in like that. I'm going to move to the second layer, create another mask, and then I'm going to paint where I want to have the foreground visible. And again, just where it's transitioning to the uh, mid-ground layer, I'm just going to paint a little bit softer. As you can see, there are a few things I need to retouch on this photo, like for example, the tripod leg here, and then a few dust spots in the sky. And again, this is really easy to do with the pen. I'm just going to select the remove tool using the shortcut J. And as you can tell, I made a merged layer here to make things easier. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then simply paint over the tripod leg with the remove tool and then zoom in a little bit here for the dust spots. I'm just going to increase the size a bit. Also, if you're doing portrait retouching and doing things like frequency separation, it's really nice to do this with the pen display. All right, now I've taken this photo back into Lightroom. I've tweaked it a little bit more. And let me show you how easy and fun dodging and burning is with the tablet. You can, of course, also do your dodging and burning in Photoshop. But I just want to show you the tablet in both softwares. So I'm going to create a new brush mask, increase the exposure a bit, maybe increase the whites a bit as well, and then also increase the temperature a bit. And then I'll paint over the areas that I want to brighten. And also in Lightroom, the amount of pressure you put on the pen determines the amount you're actually painting in. Now I'm going to add another brush mask and then decrease the exposure, add some contrast and decrease the temperature a bit. And then I'm going to paint over the areas that I want to darken. Now again, I'm doing this very quickly just for the sake of the example, but let me just show you a quick before and after. Now I have to say that there is somewhat of a learning curve here. It's a bit of a different workflow and it will take some time using the pen display to get accustomed to things like the shortcuts and just the feel of editing photos this way. So is this pen display or a pen display for that matter something you really need as a photographer to edit your photos? Well, the short answer is no. But it is a lot of fun to use and it really makes some editing tasks much easier and much more fun. Besides that, if you're into drawing or sketching or anything like that, this is a fantastic tool. And the Huion Canvas Pro 13 2.5K is a wonderful option for anyone getting into pen displays. I would, however, actually recommend looking at the slightly larger 16 inch version of this Canvas Pro because I did find that the 13 inch was a little bit too small, but that could be a personal thing. Anyway, if you're interested in checking out the Huion pen display, I will leave a link for you in the description. All right, that's it for me. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.